So we've made progress on housing. We're also making progress on public transport. The buses, the BSEP has been rolled out aggressively, even faster than what we originally aimed to do. And I know my residents are very happy with the extra bus services we have, and other MPs have received similar feedback from their residents. And I'm not surprised that many MPs are now asking for more BSEP bus routes. And more buses and more routes will come. For trains, it's still work in progress. We've, SMRT and LTA have been working hard to improve services and reduce disruptions. And we've also introduced free early morning rides, which have helped to spread out the peak hour traffic noticeably. But I know the trains are still crowded at peak hours, and we have major plans unfolding over the next two years. New trains are starting to come in, starting late this year, more next year. We're upgrading the signal equipment, will be started by 2016. So we can expect significant improvements in the train service by next year, and this is a problem which we can and we will solve. Our aim is not just to have more buses and trains running, but to build a first-class public transport system in Singapore so that people can get around comfortably, efficiently, and affordably without needing to own a car. And this is essential to us being a world-class city and an endearing home. You see it in global cities like New York, Hong Kong, Sydney, where many people don't own cars, don't even have driving licenses, because it's too expensive. The car itself may not be expensive, but buying a parking lot can cost you a fortune, more than a COE cost in Singapore, and parking in town also is expensive and more than the ERP cost in Singapore. And so, most people take public transport because it's affordable and efficient. Some also cycle, which is not only affordable, efficient, but also green, and is something which I think we should also encourage in Singapore. So we should learn from the cities which have good public transport systems. For example, London. I was there recently for the Singapore Day, and so I decided to have a look at their bus transport system because LTA had been telling me about it. And we have a Singapore company, Comfort Delgro, which is running a significant part of the bus service in London. London runs a hybrid system. The government, that means TFL, Transport for London, owns, plans and regulates the whole bus system, the network. So they own the buses, they plan the routes, they set the rules, they tender out routes to operators. The operators take over the equipment, take over the staff, they run the routes for a period. And the operators are private sector and they operate on a fixed price contract for profit. The fares are not cheap. Per trip, more than three Singapore dollars, which is one and a half to four times Singapore prices. And every year, the fares go up, more or less automatically. RPI plus X. RPI, the price index, plus X, which is 1 or 2%, because buses, wages go up more than general cost of uh, food and consumables. So every year, the prices go up. But even then, even then, it doesn't cover all the costs. And TFL has to subsidize the service heavily with taxpayers' money. Every year, almost one billion Singapore dollars. It works well. It's expensive, but it works well. And it's the result of many years of experimentation, trial and error, change and refinement, and adaptation, both by the regulators, as well as by the operators, as well as by the commuters. So we will learn from London and other similar cities to build a first-class public transport system in Singapore. 